Pink Floyd. What can I say about them that hasn't already been said? I think they may very well be the greatest rock band of all time. Sure, they do owe a lot to the Beatles, Bob Dylan, and so many who came before them, but in terms of expanding the art of the concept album, there are very few bands who can even touch them in terms of creativity. And all while having changed band leaders three times with lots of rock and roll drama along the way. But when their iconic 70s lineup was really working together, they were unstoppable. As musicians, they're all top notch. David Gilmour may very well be one of my biggest influences as a guitar player. Nick Mason, one of my favorite drummers. Rick Wright, while maybe not as flashy a keyboardist as someone like Keith Emerson, provided their records with definitive sounds and textures. And anchoring it all down is Roger Waters' bass, along with his conceptual and lyrical ideas that redefined the art of performance as we know it. And let's be honest, who else can make dolphin noises like Roger? Not to mention so many other musicians and singers who gave their work an extra punch. And all with solos, jams, and melodies that surfaced the song while still impressing audiences with virtuosity. When it comes to my single biggest influence as a musician, writer, producer, I mean, I have a lot of them, but probably the biggest would be Pink Floyd. I talk about them a lot. Pink Floyd had gotten its early start performing space rock gems. Even Pink Floyd had disco hits off of the wall. You can always count on Pink Floyd for stunning visuals in their videos. I named Dark Side of the Moon the album that shaped me the most. Practically every album I've ever made has been me chasing their brilliance. One of the videos that helped get this channel going was my reaction video to the Nostalgia Critics review of The Wall, which was passionately panned all across the internet. Having that kind of response to a band really shows how much their work means to everyone, myself included. I had at one point decided to do my own review of The Wall, but taking a page from my George Harrison album reviews, I thought, why not do their entire discography? Which is a tall order. They have more albums than George that span about six decades. I really wanted to make sure I had all the facts at my disposal. Unlike George's albums, where I was discovering some of them for the first time, I've pretty much listened to every Floyd album at least a couple times in my life, even bootlegs. I have a lot of their albums on vinyl, the rest on CD. I've seen countless documentaries about them. I've been consulting my copy of Nick Mason's Inside Out, also picked up Pigs Might Fly by Mark Blake, and even checked out all the songs from the library. Yes, I still go to the library. But at the end of the day, I still need to give my own opinion on these records, regardless of what the fans' consensus is. I'll once again be using my fish rating system to decide if these albums are worth owning on vinyl, a goldfish, streaming before buying, a spotted fish, or skipping, a bad fish. And just as a heads up, because some of Pink Floyd's records are literally my favorite of all time, my standards are gonna be pretty high. So what might be a bad fish from a Pink Floyd record might actually be a spotted fish if I was giving it to some generic modern band. I'm disclosing this information so I don't get some angry mob coming at me in the comment section, which will probably still happen. I'll still include essential tracks for the albums, but as I said in my video about why Pink Floyd playlists don't work, a lot of these albums simply can't be broken apart into separate songs. You have to listen to the entire record in one sitting, which is exactly what I did before reviewing each one of these records. I'll also briefly discuss the artwork of each record. The last thing I want to discuss is because of YouTube's copyright system not catering to educational content, I'm going to be very limited in what I can show or play in these videos. So if you are able to, please consider joining my Patreon page, where I'll release extended versions of each review early, commercial free, and you'll even get your name in the credits. So let's dive into it. Before we can discuss Pink Floyd's first album, we need to go into some of their early history. So join me in the next video as we begin Pink Floyd Album Reviews.